So this is the fifth video on uh, various policies to correct market failures. Uh, number five deals with buffer stocks. Um, now, buffer stocks have a slightly different aim to the policies that we have looked at so far. Um, so far, we have looked at policies which aim to increase or decrease the level of consumption of a good. Um, the aim with buffer stocks is slightly different. The aim is to stabilize prices. Um, the failure that, uh, that we are working to try and eliminate here is instability in the prices of commodities. Now, commodities tend to have uh, relatively volatile prices on world markets. And by commodities, we mean things like um, food primarily, but also things like oil and, and iron and various bits and pieces like that. Um, the reason they tend to have quite volatile prices is that we normally think of them as having relatively inelastic demand and supply. So if I do a quick sketch diagram down here, you can see what I mean. So for a commodity, we would expect the supply to be relatively inelastic, particularly in the short term. And we'd also expect demands to be relatively inelastic because um, commodities are, are generally uh, required. They're, they're, there's a degree of necessity around, uh, around the, uh, the demand for commodities. And what you'll notice here is that if I alter the, either the supply or the demand here, then the impact on price will be really significant. Um, so even if there are relatively small fluctuations in either demand or supply, so for instance, if I draw an increase in demand like this, then what happens is that we end up with a very substantial increase in the price of the good. And this leads to quite a high level of volatility um, between commodities. So let's have a look at um, buffer stocks, how what they are and how they work in order to try and reduce the volatility of commodity prices. So let's think about this market for uh, food products, for agricultural products. And agricultural products is the normal uh, scenario that we think about when we talk about buffer stocks. That tends to be the, uh, the, the most commonly used example. So what we end up with for, uh, for agricultural products is a diagram that looks something like this. So um, we assume that demand for the product stays reasonably constant. Um, but obviously, the supply of the product will depend very much on the, the quality of the weather that year and, and so on. Um, so you will have years when the su supply is good, and that will be demonstrated by the supply curve on the right-hand side over here. Um, but there will also be years where the supply is bad, and therefore supply will be much lower, as shown by this supply curve. And the result of that is, as you can see on the uh, on the left-hand axis over here, that we end up with a big volatility of price. So one year it's bad harvest and the price is very high, following year the price is good and the price is very low, and so on. Um, and that can be very difficult for uh, for for uh, individuals and firms to manage. So what the government will do is if, let's imagine that, that there's a, a good harvest in a particular year, what the government will do is it will intervene to actually buy up some of this surplus stock. Um, so what the government does effectively is reduce the supply of the stock. So what we can say is that after the government intervention, they will move the supply of uh, this particular product back to this equilibrium point, okay? And that will lead to a price in between the, uh, the, two, uh, the two outlying prices, the, the extreme uh, PB and PG. Of course, what this means is they then have stock in reserve as well. So if in the following year there is a bad harvest, then what the government can do is they can actually release some of that stock that they are holding of the product, and they can actually increase the supply um, from uh, S, uh, the top S line, the bad harvest S line, towards the uh, supply line with intervention. And the result of this being, if they can manage it properly, that actually they can um, take surplus stock off the market when there is um, a glut, when there is a, a good harvest and too much of the product, and they, will, they can keep that and then release it back onto the market when there is a shortage. Um, in reality... It, it's not normally quite so perfect as this. Um, what normally happens in the real world is that actually the government will set intermediate limits like this and they will intervene if the prices go outside of those points. So this would be the lower intervention and this would be the upper intervention.
So if there was an increase in supply um, in a particular year because of a good harvest that meant that the market price would fall below the lower intervention price, then the government would intervene and, and, uh, and buy up some of that stock. Um, if the, the supply was poor in a particular year, um, and the price was rising above the upper intervention limit, then the government would release some of those buffer stocks back onto the market. Um, of course, this one of the major assumptions here is, first of all, that, that the goods can be kept for a year um, until the following harvest comes around. That may not always be the case. It also, of course, assumes that there is a surplus first. Um, if, if you end up with uh, the first year of the scheme being a bad harvest, then actually the government doesn't have any stock to release, um, and therefore the, the policy will fail. But, um, but buffer stocks said are generally used um, for conversations about price stability and particularly um, agricultural prices. It's cropped up a couple of times in the exams related to wheat and similar things like that. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an indication about how you could use uh, buffer stocks in an answer.